The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Why did he use that word? God goes to extreme measures to bring the loss to himself. The greatest gift you will ever give this world is your intimacy with God. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are all three inside of me. I've got the power right now. I think what Jesus really wants is people to go. I want to be the answer to Jesus' prayer request. Welcome to the Fuel for the Harvest podcast. When this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, then shall the end come. Hey everyone, and welcome to this latest episode of Fuel for the Harvest. This is Nathan. And this is Charlie. We're your host for today. Thank you so much for listening in to Fuel for the Harvest. We're so excited to join you, and we're launching a new series of podcast episodes that we'll be doing called Things God Never Said. There are so many statements we throw around as Christians acting as if they're biblical, acting as if they're absolute truth, as if God himself said them. Sometimes we say them to encourage each other in difficult times. We just... Well, I don't know what to say, so I'll I'll throw this Christianese statement at them. And in reality, they're lies. They're not even true. And so those are the things that we're going to be addressing in this series. Yeah, and some of them are like so crazy that they're almost opposite of the message of Jesus. Like <laughs> straight up. We'll talk about some of those uh, a little later. But yeah, we're really excited about this new s- series and uh, we're excited that you're here to share it with us. So the one that we're going to talk about today is this number one thing that God never said, and it's what we throw around. It's God will never give you more than you can handle. Maybe you've heard it said. God will. We're going to be Jesus here for a moment. Uh, don't worry. Not going to take his place, but you've heard it said. <laughs> <laughs> God will never give you more than you can handle. Is that true? And if you're anything like me, your mind is immediately going to that one particular scripture. And I know Charlie has it, his finger in it right now. But when Charlie said, hey, that's a thing on the list of things God never said. This scripture is what I quoted to him. And he's like, well, I don't know. And here it is. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It says, no temptation has overcome you that is not common to man. God is faithful. And here it is, guys. He will not let you t- be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. It kind of sounds like it. It kind of sounds like it's saying God will never give you more than can- you can handle. But is that true? Ultimately, Ooh. our thought? Not no, really. <laughs> not at all. Well, why? Uh, I want to come back to this verse in a minute, 1 Corinthians 10, but I'm going to hop over and just look at this other scripture. 2 Corinthians, also written by Paul, chapter 1, verse 8. He says this, We were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. I don't know about you. It kind of sounds like Paul's saying, Guys, God gave us a crap ton more than we could handle. Did you just say crap on the podcast? <laughs> we are beyond our strength, despaired of life itself. It is far beyond what we could handle. Now, why would that be the case? If Paul is saying this in this letter, then there's no way in the other letter he's saying God won't give you more than you can handle. Is this a contradiction in the scripture? I don't think so. So what's really going on in this chapter? Uh, the context in First Corinthians 10, Paul's talking about idolatry and all the sins that reveal idolatry in our hearts, putting other things above God himself and loving them more. And in the midst of that, he's saying, hey, you're going to be tempted to sin. You're going to be tempted to commit idolatry, to to love other things more than God himself. But guess what? God is faithful to you and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. Basically saying, you're not going to be tempted beyond your ability to say yes to God first. Right. And just to point it out, there's a really, really significant difference between being tempted, even if even outside of idolatry, there's a big difference between the, being tempted with more than we can handle and just the idea that God would never give us more than we can handle. Those are extraordinarily different ideas. Exactly. There, God gives you the ability by his spirit to say no to temptation and yes to him every time to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh as Galatians talks about the fruit of the spirit, the fruit fruit of the flesh. So, uh, he's not going to, you're not going to face a temptation that's beyond your ability in the spirit to say no to sin. That's not going to happen. 
Uh, but will you in life encounter situations that are beyond your ability? I hope so, actually. Why? Well, James chapter 1 makes it pretty clear. Count it all joy when you encounter trials of various kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. The fact that we're faced with these extraordinarily difficult <clears throat> situations and tasks actually causes us to drive closer to Jesus, which is Painful in the moment, but glorious in the long run. <laughs> I, yeah, the Lord actually brought James 1 to my mind recently as we were facing a really difficult situation and uh, a person was coming against us and it was getting messy. Uh, it was not fun, the situation my wife and I were facing. And I was really frustrated at first having to deal with it uh, really furiously angry at this person coming against us, saying all sorts of things and my heart and a few out loud and uh uh i'm praying about it lord i forgive this person even though i she know what they're doing and then the lord brought james one to mind and it's like count it all joy my brothers when you face trials of many kinds I'm like okay i'll count it joy lord i'll just i'll just count it joy because i want perseverance in my life and uh, since the testing your of your faith produces perseverance but then i had never thought about that last phrase of the verse where it says, so let perseverance finish its course so that you will be lacking nothing. I'm going, oh, wow. God brought that to mind. Like, he, I get this situation because he doesn't want me to lack anything. What a gift. Now I can rejoice. Total mindset shift. Like, this is more than I could have handled. This is a horrific situation, yet God gave it because he wanted me to lack nothing. That's a gift. Yeah, it really is an, an extraordinary gift. Doesn't Paul say something similar? I can't remember the reference. Yeah, it's um. Well, I, I don't know what you're talking about. The, the same kind of thing as James says. Yeah, he uh, actually in the same scripture I mentioned, Second Corinthians chapter one, when he says that they were despaired of life itself because they were so burdened beyond their strength, beyond what they could handle. He then says this right after he says, "But that was." To make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He delivered us from such a deadly peril and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that he will deliver us uh, again. Paul's saying I had a choice. This extreme difficulty beyond my ability faced us and it was put in front of us to sh make us not rely on ourselves, but rely on God. We have a choice when we face our difficulties. Are we going to rely on ourselves or are we going to rely on God? Because they're going to be beyond our ability and we're going to be in complete despair. Our lives are going to spiral out of control if we're not turning straight to Jesus and saying, Lord, I need you in the midst of this. And that's Paul, what Paul exactly did. He says in the next verse, you, he says, uh, you must also help us by prayer so that many will give thanks on our behalf for the blessing granted us through the prayers of many. He's saying, guys, we have to go to God. This is the only way uh, this situation is far beyond our ability. Yeah. I, I, it's just, it's kind of a simple little podcast that we have here. Yeah. So next time somebody says to you, Hey, um, well, you know what? God won't give you more than you can handle. You can say, actually, it's been far beyond what I can handle, <laughs> but this was so that I'd rely on God and not myself. Yeah. And it's a glorious, encouraging, powerful truth. And something worth praising God about, uh, I find myself often like just so, uh, so worried with what's going on in the world around us and like trying to control everything. And that's actually part of my, my mm. temperament that my dad pointed out to me. He's like, when you were a kid, you were so nervous about everything that you started being really obsessed with like getting things in the right order so that you wouldn't have to experience those <laughs> extra stresses. And what I was doing was I was relying on myself to get me through these difficult things and uh, praise Jesus that that's not my lot in life that I have to rely yeah. on myself to get through these things. For but real. Instead, I can rely on him. Um, and obviously we would always say that uh, hard things are coming. Like it's, it's, it 
Paul talks about in Timothy that if you're going to follow Jesus, you're going to encounter trials. It's something that we can count on. Um, so we would never say that you're not going to encounter trials, but we'd absolutely say that Jesus is right there in the midst of them up close with you and uh, praise him for that. Yeah. Amen. So, uh, you know what? When you face trials, let your response be prayer and praise like we saw in those scriptures, prayer and praise. That's when I started doing that, God brought to mind the scripture. He changed my mind. He changed my perspective. And that's how I could count it joy. Not I could muster it up somehow within myself, but God brought that mindset as I started praying and praising him. So when the difficulty comes, just know, yep, it's far beyond your strength. It's far beyond your ability to handle it. But God's allowing this so that you will rely on him, get up close to him, which he knows is far beyond better for your life anyway (laughs) and how can you get there uh prayer and praise in the midst of the difficulty well thanks guys for joining this episode of fuel for the harvest god bless you and see you next time